RGB seems to be one of the biggest trends at CES this year. And I am here with Greg Lee from LG. And could you tell me why that is? Well, it's the newest iteration of an improved television system. And so when we ever have new stuff, people want to know about it. So the cool thing about micro RGB is it's a way to improve color in LED televisions. And because we're using micro LEDs as opposed to traditional standard or mini LEDs, we get more of them tightly packed together, give them better position control by controlling them in smaller groups. And since we're using individual red, green, and blue elements, we can get richer, more vibrant red, green, blue, and other colors by manipulating the color micro LEDs in the back. So the bleed is a lot different than I might expect. The bleed is a lot different in terms of light sneaking through the panel. Is that what you're talking about? Yes. So uh, light bleed, which means that light is sneaking through the panel, can be better controlled on these sets, giving better brightness, better contrast, better dynamics, and of course, better color. How does this compare to, say, a traditional OLED? From an OLED television, we're talking really two different technologies. OLED is unique in that each pixel creates its own light, so you have full control so I can turn it off and have true, perfect black, or I can have on a full brightness and or any of the colors in between. So it just has that micro contrast and that dynamic pop. Whereas micro RGB television is a backlight system that still has to be filtered through an LCD panel. So both are great technologies. Uh, micro RGB is really the you know top level of LED technology currently available, but two totally different technologies still. So we're looking at essentially two different price points? Well, most likely, yes. So if a customer was really interested in, let's say, a really large screen OLED, but maybe that large screen is slightly out of their budget, they could migrate over to a micro RGB and balance out their price, their performance, and their size, getting a larger size for equal or less, you know, less money. So what LG has basically done is we filled out our portfolio, whereas a customer wants OLED, of course we make amazing OLEDs. But if they want something where they're trying to get the most bang for their buck and still stay high performance, that's why we brought in micro RGB Evo TVs to be that you know next best option. And of course, looking at both of these, I'd be happy with either in my living room. If you could, could you talk about the AI element? I see it touted on several different items, but especially these two TVs. Right, AI is really paramount to LG in all aspects of our televisions. We use AI for processing, so we can take something that's less than perfect, let's say not even 4K, and make it once it's run through our processor look like 4K would be. So customers are always having an excellent experience regardless of how you know, good the signal incoming is. But we also use AI for personalization and customization. Meaning that if I pick up the room up my for my TV, I say, hi TV, and it goes, oh, Greg, you're back. It will literally load my personalized homepage. We have a new personalized my page where I can you know, set up widgets that I like. And immediately, you know, we sit down to watch TV and then it's like, now, what do I watch? Well, knowing what your watch history is, you can click a button and it will say, hey, here's some titles I think you'd be interested in tracking right now. Do you want to watch them? Or if I do AI search, it remembers my history. But I got a question for you. Have you ever been watching your TV and go, God, I wish the picture was better or I wish the sound was better? Yes. I mean, all the time. Yes. So we actually utilize AI where I could ask my TV, um, can you make the voices clearer? And it will hear what you say and go, oh, let me change the audio settings and let you check. Tell me which one is better and then apply it. So I don't have to go digging through menus. And if I want a picture that looks amazing, but I don't know how to set all those confusing controls in a television, I can use our AI picture wizard where it basically starts off and offers me a page that says, all right, here's six pictures. Which one visually is appealing to you? And I do this over seven, you know, uh, seven different pages. And at the end it says, here's where you started. Here, based on what our AI is seeing that you like the way in terms of look, would you like to apply it? Say yes, and everybody that runs through this goes, I'd watch that, that looks like I want in a picture. And the nice thing is, when I talk to the TV and it recognizes my voice and it loads all that, it will also load my personalized picture setting when I watch TV. All right, so it's a lot like having an expert assist you. 
Right, it's kind of like having a TV expert, a movie expert, a content expert that you can rely on that knows you and your you know, preferences and favorites and recommends things that it thinks you will like or helps you to enjoy the TV the way you would want to. All right, thank you so much, Greg, for your time and showing us the difference between uh, what's going on with micro, RGB, OLED, and AI. Thanks for coming out.